Gary Bettman speaks out about the Hockey Canada sexual assault scandal as Olympic hockey with NHLers is returning in 2026. Hey everyone, welcome into another edition of Off the Post. Rob Wong joined alongside by Toronto Sun sports columnist Steve Simmons and Post Media hockey columnist Bruce Garriock. And guys, we heard from Gary Bettman at the NHL All-Star Weekend as he held his State of the League news conference and he spoke about numerous things including the Hockey Canada sexual assault case saying he has used the words abhorrent reprehensible, horrific, and unacceptable to describe the allegations. Considering how things were handled with Kyle Beach and the Chicago Blackhawks sexual abuse scandal there, uh, there, Steve, how do you think Bettman and the teams have handled this most recent news? Well, I think they actually handled it quite well. Uh, number one, you can't compare the two situations. One happened on a team's watch. This happened before any of these players were in the National Hockey League. So understand this, the NHL really has no responsibility for anything other than the fact that four of these five players are under contract right now to NHL teams for now until the end of this season when their contracts expire. Um, so what the league did, interestingly enough, once they, once they knew what was happening here, they hired their own investigator. They spent millions of dollars as leagues tend to do, and they investigated this just as the police investigated this, just as Hockey Canada had lawyers investigate this. And they made their, they had put together their own documents and their own, which they will keep private because they can't share that stuff while this uh, case is under, you know, review with the courts. So, so I don't know what else they could have done. They can't really suspend the players who are now have left their teams but I think what, what Bettman was saying without coming right out and saying it, they're not in the league right now. They've left their teams. They will not be in the league when you know the season ends and their contracts expire. And they will not be re-signed, I presume, until we know of a guilt or an innocence or whatever you want to call it, what happens in court a year or two years from now. Well, you know, and look at the situation in Ottawa with Alex Formanton. I mean... <laughs> He has been an unsigned player here for two years. Um, you know, he has been playing in Switzerland um, since all of this surfaced. Um, I look at the, the way that Hockey Canada has handled this. I thought it was quite interesting yesterday, Rob, when immediately after the news conference ended, uh, Hockey Canada sent out a news release saying, well, we've, we've cooperated to the fullest on this investigation. I didn't get the sense from listening to the London police uh, yesterday, and I, I thought they did as good a job as they could under very difficult circumstances. But I didn't get a sense from them, Steve, that that the Hockey Canada people have cooperated one bit until they had to. I mean, you know, they settled this lawsuit, uh, unbeknownst to the to the players involved, I guess. And you know, I I, I don't know why people thought they would get any answers at that news conference yesterday. It was pretty clear to me that uh, the London police have their own internal issues with this file that uh, they've dealt with internally. But I also thought it was interesting when it said some people involved in that first investigation, they kept saying it was one investigation, but really it is two, Steve. They kept saying the people involved in that first investigation could be called as witnesses in the second investigation. I think what we're going to have to do here is just be patient. But you're right, Steve. These guys aren't officially, they aren't officially suspended, but they are. I want to get in for one second, though, on, on your, your talk of Hockey Canada and the London police. Both of those groups are the reason that this is now being dealt with six years later. Because yes. the London police did not properly investigate or choose to investigate, they didn't do their jobs. Hockey Canada, from the moment that they knew about this, didn't do its job. Hockey Canada has handled this very badly. Um, the London police, I like what's going on now with the new police chief. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll find out more when, when this goes to court or doesn't go to court. But, um, but I like what they're doing and how they're taking a certain responsibility. I think I think you know Hockey Canada, and, and it's been proven because they've, they've you know they've lost all the people up top and the, their reputation and all that. Hockey Canada should have taken a beating on this and did take a beating on this. And really, honestly, 
the people who should have taken the beating on it totally are the players, are the people who were involved. They, this was not a Hockey Canada event in that bar and in that hotel. And, and I think, you know, this is on these players and on these people if this is what they did. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Steve, but I always thought that you felt that Hockey Canada was run with some arrogance. Um, and, 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 and I yeah. feel like um, the, you can't the, touch me is that is how they how they approach yeah, this. Yeah. And it, it's the completely wrong way to yeah. to deal with it. Yeah, very well said. Uh, meantime, at that same news conference, Gary Bettman, of course, announcing that NHLers would return to Olympic competition beginning in 2026. The last time NHLers were allowed to play, Canada came away with the gold. Bruce, I know it's still a few years away, but does Canada still deserve to be the favorite heading in or is a country like the U.S. now the front runner? Well, it's interesting because I thought, you know, the the whole thing about Canada's goalies makes it really interesting, right? I mean... Um, you who is going to be Canada's goalie in that tournament, Steve? Um, uh, Bruce, Bruce, do you have pads? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no, but when you think about it, like it, and, might, be, and, it uh, might be someone like Aiden Hill. We don't yeah, know. I, one thing we don't know, and I and I talked to at least one person who has been in these kind of positions to pick the teams before. He says you can talk right now and say who's Canada goalies, but really, you need to know a year and a half from now. So yeah. it's time for someone, I don't know who that someone is, to emerge. When you, and when you compare it to the United States and they're sitting there with Jake Ottinger and Hellebuck and, and Thatcher Demko, it's like, can we please have one of them? Um, like they have three goalies better than anyone Canadian. And if you had John Gibson in there, it's probably four or, f- four or five that, that are better than any Canadian goalie right now. But... The roster comparisons get interesting to me. You know, you, you McDavid on one side and Matthews on the other and, 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 and Eichel and Hughes for, for the Americans and then, you know, McKinnon and possibly Crosby, you know, for a swan song with, with Team Canada. The rosters are fantastic, the players, both sides. But the goalie differential is, is, is very wide. And I think that puts the U.S. in, a, in a, I think, a favorite kind of spot, but I still never want to underrate what happens when a guy puts a Canadian uniform on because we've seen it before. And I, I'm, I've, I've been to, I've been to every Olympic hockey tournament the NHL was involved in. And so I've seen three Canadian gold medals, by the way, I've seen no American gold medals. Hmm. Well, and, and that, that's, you know, you're right. Like Canadian Heart, 2002, Salt Lake City, we were both there. 2006, we saw them implode. Um, you know, goaltending means so much. Uh, I think that on goaltending low, the Americans are favored. But I, I, I'll say one thing. It means a lot to your Canadian when they put on that jersey. Yep, I think everybody's just happy that it is coming back and it should be interesting to see how it all goes down. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below for Steve Simmons and Bruce Garriock. I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you next time.